Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Karen Dina, and today we're going to talk about prebiotics. What are they and why are they so important? Before we get started, let's talk a little bit about probiotics. Probiotics are microorganisms that live in our GI tract. And one of the most well-known ones is Lactobacillus acidophilus. And maybe if you've ever taken a probiotic supplement, you've seen it as one of the ingredients in that formulation. Now there's been a lot of talk in the media and in the health field about the supposed health benefits of probiotics. And in addition to that, one of the questions that has been raised is, how can we help probiotics to stay in our GI tract longer or help them live longer? And one of them is pretty simple, food. Just like we feed ourselves, it's important to make sure that our probiotics are having a good amount of food in order to help them survive. Maybe this is one of the answers. Now, what kind of food is it that probiotics actually like? Do probiotics like this type of food, or is there something else that's more suitable for them? The truth is, probiotics like fiber. So foods that are higher in fiber would be preferable to probiotics and foods that are lower in fiber, like the photo I just showed you. So let's take a closer look at fiber. Now, if we're consuming a diet that's based on fruits and vegetables, or just whole natural plant foods in general, we're consuming a good amount of fiber. Now, fiber is not digestible by us as humans, but probiotics can ferment certain types of fiber in order to create food for themselves. And fiber that can be used as food by probiotics is called prebiotics. If we take a closer look at fiber, most types of fiber are made up of glucose. And a good example would be the fiber cellulose. Another name that people use for cellulose is roughage. Now, as you can see here, cellulose is made up of a series of glucose molecules hooked together by bonds. Now, we as humans cannot break down these bonds in cellulose, so that fiber passes through us undigested. The type of fiber that is preferred by probiotics as a food source is composed of fructose instead of glucose. And two examples of that type of fiber are fructooligosaccharides, and FOS would be short for that, and inulin. Here's an example of inulin. And inulin is composed of fructose molecules hooked together by bonds. And what happens is that probiotics break down those bonds and they form fructose and free fatty acids from both inulin and fructooligosaccharides. So here we have a pictorial representation. We have lactobacillus acidophilus here and inulin. So the lactobacillus ferments the inulin or fructooligosaccharides and creates fructose and free fatty acids. Now the probiotics then will use the fructose as a source of food. And what's left over is the free fatty acids, which interestingly enough can provide food for the cells that line our large intestine. They're called colonocytes. Now fructooligosaccharides and inulin are found in a lot of different foods. In fact, there's over 36,000 different plant species that contain uh, both of these types of fiber. And the foods that contain the most amount of fructooligosaccharides and inulin would include bananas, Jerusalem artichokes, dandelion greens, onions, garlic, artichokes, leeks, yacon, shallots, and lots of other ones. What's really interesting is that the sunflower plant family, which would include dandelion greens, uh, Jerusalem artichokes, artichoke, and yacon, uh, tend to contain larger amounts of fructooligosaccharides and inulin than other plant species.
Other plant foods contain good amounts of fructooligosaccharides and inulin, just a little bit less than the really rich sources that we just mentioned. And those would include lettuce, carrots, oranges, watermelon, and different types of berries, especially the ones pictured here, which would include raspberries and blackberries. What it comes down to is there's lots of different plants, lots of different fruits and vegetables that contain good amounts of fructooligosaccharides and inulin. So if we're consuming a variety of fruits and vegetables, we're going to be providing the type of fiber that our probiotic bacteria can use as a food source. And whole natural plant foods provide other beneficial types of fiber as well. In summary, if we are consuming a variety of whole natural plant foods, especially fruits and vegetables, we will be providing a good amount of the type of fiber that probiotic bacteria like to use as a food source. And this information on probiotics and prebiotics is really the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more to learn about prebiotics and probiotics. And if you'd like to take your knowledge to the next level, I would encourage you to visit our website at rawfoodeducation.com and read about our Science of Raw Food Nutrition series of classes that we teach at the Living Light Culinary Institute. And prebiotics and probiotics are covered in our Science 3 class. Thanks for watching.